the final score, Bromley nil, Wrexham nil. And I know we're heading into the running of the season, but it feels to me like the injuries that we picked up in this match were more significant than the result. Rob Leanton, oh, poor Leanton, having suffered that horrible injury at Bromley last season, suffering another one. Phil Parkinson thinks a broken wrist. He certainly needed oxygen on the pitch. And so a huge blow for Wrexham. If that's the case, he'll surely be out for the season. And, well, Christian Dibble had nothing much to do after he came on. And we know as recently as last Friday that he can do an excellent job. But it's, it's a, a blow for any side to lose what may well be the best player in his position in the whole division. And so a, a real blow for Wrexham there with Lainton out. Aaron Hayden went off at half-time as well. The outlook's a bit better for him because it seems he was unwell rather than injured. So let's hope that's the case and he can recover for Tuesday. But a, a worrying postscript to a, a match which yeah, we can't say Wrexham played well in. But I don't think it's that bad an outcome. Wrexham made four changes from a team that won at Notts County. Of course, they'd rotated the team a little for that match. Now, Lainton came back in for Dibble. Hall Johnson came back in for the injured Bryce Hosanna. And up front, Ollie Palmer and Paul Mullen resumed their duties as our front two. It was an ugly match, really. And I think it's very important to remember there's two teams in the football game. And much as you want to impose yourself, if the other side gets certain things right, it's very difficult to fight against it. Bromley are a long ball team. That makes their 4G pitch maybe a slight peculiarity. And certainly Wrexham were complaining about the bounce on it. Uh, 4G is nice for moving around on the floor. But uh, when you're launching it long, the bounce sometimes did seem to catch players out. And it just became a really difficult game to play football in. I couldn't help thinking back to the Boreham Wood match, another long ball team. As I said in the commentary in the podcast for that, when you play a team like that, there will be phases where they impose their style and the game's scrappy and lots of restarts and you're getting bombarded and stuck in corners of the pitch. And there'll be points, hopefully, where you impose your style on them. Against Boreham Woods, we did that brilliantly. In this game, apart from a spell of about 20 minutes, to be fair, through the first half, we didn't really. And as a result, it was a scrappy match with very few clear chances. The two best chances probably fell to Michael Cheek, second top scorer in the division. Luckily for us, his touch on both was awful. Unluckily for us, the second one was what led to Linton's injury. So anyway, let's dig a bit deeper into the actual instance of the game. Bromley started off well, putting long balls in and testing us. And that first chance came to Cheek in the fifth minute. Partington, who was the right-sided centre-back, but we've seen it playing for Eastleigh, can be a very progressive wing-back, scored twice for us, against us last season. Swung across in. Toza got up but couldn't get a clean header on it and it fell for Cheek unmarked at the far post about 10 yards out. An absolutely horrible touch from Cheek who should have brought it down and then have Leanton exposed to drive the ball past him. Wrexham recovers and we started to get a bit more of a foothold and like I said this is the one period of the game where we started to impose our style, where we started to move it around, where we started to pen Bromley in and our midfield got on top. Still, Chances are few and far between, though. There were a couple of headed chances from corners, both delivered by Young. One from the right-hand side, Hayden getting up at the far post, but the ball arrived just too high for him. He couldn't control his head, it went over the bar. The second one from the left, not such a difficult header. Cleworth in a crowd, but I think he just got up a bit too early and as a result couldn't control his header and put it over the bar. And it's a minute later, Wrexham were frustrated again. A long ball over the top by Hayden, Palmer and Hal Johnson both running in on the keeper. The flag went up for offside. It's impossible to tell from the replays because there's no picture of the ball being hit and where the players are in the same frame. It was a close one, uh, but probably correct. Uh, halfway through the half, Wrexham, uh, uh, probably the closest we came in open play with a, a really odd incident, it's got to be said. The spell of pressure ending of Mullen making a good tackle in the Bromley box to find Hall Johnson. And he whipped in a beast of a cross. It was a lovely strike over to the far post. The keeper couldn't get across to it. Palmer was bearing in on it. And having looked at it again, 
it's quite clear that Palmer doesn't touch it. So I thought at first he'd headed it into the side netting from a couple of yards out. I think everyone did. But actually, Partington got across and managed to head it behind firmly for a corner. That was why Palmer was livid when the referee pointed to a goal kick. I mean, it was a chance because if Palmer had got over the top of him, he probably would have scored. The other weird thing about it, I, I, I don't know, I've, this has never crossed my mind before. Is this normal? The goals weren't secured. Surely on a 4G pitch, the goals are still attached somehow to the ground. So as the keeper uh, came stumbling across, he ran into the post and the, bo the post shifted a foot. It didn't affect where the ball had gone. In fact, if he'd managed to do that a bit earlier, Partington might have headed it into the net because he moved the goal towards where the header went. But it was a weird incident. All he did was reposition it and restart. Very odd. Anyway, Bromley started to get racks at Wrexham a bit. This is all about Hayden to an extent. Of course, we all know he's a terrific defender. For the first half hour or so, I thought he looked his imperious best. But suddenly, he just started being troubled. Al Hamadi is on loan to Bromley. He's a sort of hard-working, um, attacking player. Hayden seemed to have him in his pocket. All of a sudden, Al Hamadi started beating Hayden. He beat him down the left, had a good run. Fed Wagstaff running down the left channel, but Toza did well just to make sure he didn't come inside. And he shot weakly across Leighton and wide to the far post. But Hayden... Clearly not himself, and Bromley starting to put a bit of pressure on us in the latter stages. Hayden made a couple of more mistakes. The game got to half time, and he didn't emerge for the second half. It transpired afterwards. He'd reported he'd felt ill in the week, but felt okay on Saturday morning, and then had a bit of a relapse. So hopefully, he'll be able to get over that by Tuesday. Tyler French came on to replace him at the break. Wrexham started quickly, within a minute of the start. Uh, Palmer was feeding a ball to Mullen who headed the ball off, to, uh, off the, too close to the goalkeeper from 10 yards out and Wrexham tried to be positive but the game kept getting bro broken up by stoppages and, and that didn't really help us good sight to see Jordan Davis coming back from injury to replace McElinden in the 56th minute but almost straight away there was a 6 minute delay after Linton got hurt and what was the closest we came to a goal in the match as well Bush the left sided centre back standing the ball into the area where frankly Cheek should have done better again he found himself all on his own about 8 yards out he, he drove it on target and forced a good save out of Linton he didn't quite get hold of it. And that, I think, was where the problem lay because Lainton got his hands up quickly to parry. Um, and the ball just arrived a fraction later, which meant it sort of bounced over, out of off his hands and away from him. Al Hamadi attacked it. The two men came together and Lainton was badly hurt. So there was a long stoppage. It was immediately obvious that he wasn't going to be able to continue. He was given oxygen and, again, for the second game in a row, had to leave Bromley's pitch on a stretcher. There's, there's a part of me, because Lainton does get to the ball and knock it clear, that has to ask, why wasn't Al Hamadi punished? It's a yellow card if you're reckless. Well, he's gone in hard enough to break Lainton's wrist, it would seem. He didn't really get close to playing the ball as such. Um, maybe I shouldn't say it was actually in danger. Well, is it endangering? Is it by definition endangering Lainton, which would be a red card, because he'd broken his wrist. So... I thought the referee was lenient with Al Hamadi. I know, you know, people say if the ball's loose in the box, you've got to go for it. But that was a hell of an impact. Anyway, Dibble came on, and Bromley didn't really work him. Although I would say Bromley were the more likely team, possibly in the last twenty minutes. Wrexham did work a ball forwards, and we were the ones who had the sort of half chances, if you'd even call them that. A few times, Davis and Young got around the edge of the area. Davis particularly didn't really pull the trigger, and maybe they ought to have done. When they did, Bromley's box was packed and there were blocks coming in. Probably the best chance we had was 19 minutes from the end. A long throw by Toza. Real crowd in the goal mouth. French got the ball six yards out, but with his back to goal and a lot of bodies to train him in goal, and sensibly decided to play it back out to James Jones, who was unmarked in the D. Unfortunately, the ball seemed to skip quite awkwardly towards Jones, and it was coming straight at him as well, which was always a bit difficult to hit. And he launched it way over the bar. Pity that. 
A minute later, a shout for a penalty by Wrexham. Hull Johnson with an excellent run from the halfway line. He got into the box and Chris Bush just body checked him, came across him. But Hull Johnson was incandescent, convinced it was a penalty. Look, it's a tricky one, this, isn't it? Bush, who should have been booked in the early in the first half for a, a, a sort of st- st- high challenge on Mullen, is somebody familiar with the dark arts. Remember last season when Dior Angus was furious because he felt that Bush had trod on his head and investigation showed it's not the only time that a team had been angry at Bush for doing something like that. Well, you know, like I said, he's mastered the dark arts. I have no doubt he was intending to play Hall Johnson rather than the ball. No question about that. But I've got to say, refs don't tend to give those. You know, Hall Johnson's knocked it past and Bush has managed to make the contact look a bit like he's just coming across him. It would take a brave ref to give that. Although I have to say that soon afterwards, a free kick was given against Wrexham for a body check on the halfway line, there's the difference, which really had minimal contact. And if that was a foul, then this one was a penalty. But, yeah, I've got to be honest and say, generally, these just don't get given. Wrexham had a couple of a half chances, 11 minutes left, and we won a free kick right on the edge of the D. Perfect Jordan Davis territory, and he delivers. He struck it well, but Bromley are a big team. They had a tall wall, and Michael Cheek jumped up, hit him on the head, Flew behind for the corner. Cheek needed treatments because he got walloped in the face. Um, I, I think Davis probably may well have scored if Cheek had not managed to get up and get his head to it. It was a good strike. And then in added time, one last moment of hope. Paul Johnson doing well to find Jones on the right-hand side. He fed it in and Davis with a looping header from around the penalty spot, which didn't really trouble the keeper. So, yeah... Nil nil felt disappointing because we didn't get going. Felt disappointing because at half time, Stockport were losing 2 0 at home, and all the other teams around us were drawing, and then they all managed to pull back and win. But uh, I, I think this was a tough game. I know Bromley are only what ninth, but they've got a night, they've just had a tough run of games, and they've got a nice run coming up. You have a look in four weeks, I'll bet you they'll be higher up the division and pushing for the playoffs. And I don't think that's a bad result, to be honest, especially as the conditions and Bromley's style of play meant it was very difficult for us to really get our, our game going. Looking at performances, poor Lainton made a good save, but then got hurt with getting to the rebound. Apart from that, didn't have that much to do, neither did Dibble. The centre-backs, well, Hayden, like I said, for half an hour looked excellent and then suddenly caved in a bit and clearly was ill. That's the reason why. Can't judge him for that. French was excellent when he replaced him at half-time. He had a brilliant second half. He was really in control, good physically in terms of winning headers. And his pace was useful, running the ball behind sometimes when he was under pressure. The other two centre-backs, I thought, were the two outstanding players on the pitch for us. Toza was just massive in the middle of defence, dealt with everything, really authoritative. Cleworth, likewise, defensively very solid, got forwards really well. We gave Clemens the man of the match uh, in the commentary, Neil Williams and I. I think I lean actually personally slightly towards Ben Toza, but really those two were superb. Uh, the wing back, Saul Johnson, was busy and got forwards, probably our, our most dangerous player in terms of looking like he might pop up in dangerous situations, to be honest. Didn't always have the end product, but he was a threat, so he did okay. But fans had a good game, because we saw Notts County that. I mean, still fighting to get his fitness. That two games in four days was a bit much for him. Let's hope it isn't on Tuesday. But he had a very good game. He was combative. He defended well. He tried to drive forwards. He's not as attacking, obviously, as Hall Johnson. But he had a good game and combined well with Cleworth on the left. In midfield, McAlinden was withdrawn. To be honest, he, he struggled to make an impact. And it is good for us that Davis comes back. McAlinden, I don't think, is really a centre mid. He worked very hard, but he, he couldn't make any impact. Couldn't make the ball stick. Lost the ball a few times as well. Luke Young, well, because of the nature of the game, we were knocking the ball long far too often because Bromley's pressing was really good and really carefully thought through. And they managed to sustain it for much of the match because they were measuring their efforts. They had very clear triggers to to go at us and as a result Young found himself a lot deeper than usual wasn't able to get towards the edge of the box much and didn't influence the match as much as he usually does I wouldn't criticise him mind what he did he did well but if you think about it all that I've just said is why Tom O'Connor would have been useful in this match to release players Jordan Davis came on of course and 
again, not quite suiting him. He got forwards more than Young and managed to get in some decent situations. And at the end, you felt it was him who would make something happen if anybody was going to. And uh, James Jones, again, really constant workhorse, up and down, up and down. Got a couple of good crosses in as well. But again, our midfield just couldn't quite influence the game as they wanted to. And then up front, and Palmer did pretty well with his headers, to be fair, and was scrapping away, but was finding himself quite isolated. And the same with Mullen, another playing together up front. But, you know, often Palmer would drive forwards and find he was the furthest player forwards and had to wait for support. Mullen would try and drift off, and he was really working hard to try and make things happen. But it was frustrating for him. He just couldn't quite get the, right, the opportunities. Had a couple of long-range efforts. Uh, but could, didn't get any chances in the box. So a frustrating day for Wrexham. But like I say, the two points dropped and the lacklustre performance, I don't think are that much of an issue, to be perfectly honest. The injury to Lainton and possibly to Hayden are much more significant for us. So let's hope that we're able to ride those out. With the final score of Bromley nil, Wrexham nil. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.